Today I'm going to give you an overview of the Lymphonet Collector application. Before we get into it, let's take a look at the history of the application. It was originally developed for use by regulatory inspectors and managers. The Collector application has a number of benefits, including creating a shorter sample result turnaround time by notifying the lab in advance of incoming samples, and that allows the lab to assign the tests to the samples right within lymphonet.com, so it's a seamless integration which really speeds up the process for the labs and allows your turnaround time to be reduced. It also prevents typos by eliminating the duplication of data entry. And in addition, the Collector app allows for more streamlined communication between the inspectors, the laboratory, and the regulatory managers. Uh, they can all use the Lymphonet dashboard or the Collector application for all of their input needs so they can always know what's going on with the test results at any moment. Now that we've talked a little bit about why the application was created, let's get right into how to use it. The first step to using the Lymphonet Collector application is, of course, to log in. Now, we're going to be logging in here using a test account, so there won't be any real data sent to a laboratory. Now that we've logged into the application, we see that it's taken us to the home window, and this is always where the application will take you when you first log in. At the top of this window, we have the Lymphonet Collector logo, the name of the person whose credentials we've used to log in with, and the settings icon. Over on the left we see the icons that are used to create a sample collection report and there are three columns in the middle of the home window and this is what they're for. The first one is the saved reports column and this is where we have links to the reports that have not yet been uh, set to ready to submit so these are things that you might be working on presently. Then we see reports without a chain of custody in the middle there and that's the column that includes links basically to identify reports that need a chain of custody but they're ready to submit other than that. And then finally on the right, we see reports that are ready to submit. These are reports that have been created, ready to submit. They have a chain of custody, but they haven't actually been sent to the server yet. Um, and that may be because you're offline, you haven't had a chance to connect to Wi-Fi or your uh, mobile networks, or maybe you're just waiting before you submit them for some feedback or something like that. Now from the home screen, let's go ahead and create a sample collection report. The first thing to do to create a new report is to click the Create button over on the left. If you're using a touch screen, you can just tap the button and it works exactly the same way. Once you've clicked that, you're going to see a new report window open. And from that window, you're going to want to first select a product category. For our example, we're going to use Feed. You would just select whatever it is you were sampling at the time. Once you've selected the product category, you can use the uh, selector next to that to select one or more subcategories. You can just click or tap multiple items here to select as many as you need. In this case, we're going to go with dry, bulk, and investigational. And now that we've input the product category and any applicable subcategories, it's just a matter of filling out the form to get the sample ready to submit. The first thing you'll see there is the sample number, and you want to make sure that's correct, of course. You can edit it if it's incorrect, and if the sequencing is wrong on your sample numbers, you can go back into settings, which we'll look at in a minute, and you can adjust that there. And after you've done that, you just want to make sure the date that you took the sample is correct, fill in the product material supplied, if applicable, uh, fill in the lot and invoice number of the, for the material sampled, and the next field is for the date that the material was shipped to the place you are inspecting. So that's the ship date to the current location. It's not the sample date or anything like that. Next, fill in the container sampled, size of container sampled, and amount on hand. And the field below that is the owner dealer field, which is used for the name and address of the establishment that you are inspecting. This field is unique, uh, at least from what we've seen so far, because it has the functionality to create a drop down list. So you can basically save commonly used names and addresses and uh, populate them in automatically in the future. When creating a new item, just be sure to copy the quick list name down to the description so that it appears on the report. And the guarantor is for the name and address of the company that manufactured the product. And this one also has the functionality to create a drop-down list so that you can reuse previously saved entries. And once again, just make sure that when you're creating a new item to copy the quick list name down to the description so that it appears on the report. And now fill in the details about how you took the sample and prepared it for the lab under the sample collected and prepared in the following manner field. And like the previous two fields, this one has the ability to create a drop-down list of frequently used items but unlike the last two, you don't want to copy the quick list name into the actual text field because that's just used for search in this case and you don't want that to appear on the report. Fill in the sample collection location field with any descriptive information you may have about the location where you took the sample. 
And now having completed page one, we're going to click the arrow on the right to go to the next page. The sample coordinates field is an optional field and in Windows 8 you can use your internet or Wi-Fi connection to retrieve the coordinates. Some computers will actually retrieve them using a GPS chipset. Depends on whether or not yours is configured with that. Uh, in any case, you can leave it blank if there's no internet or GPS chipset available to grab these coordinates for you. The next field is used to enter the claimed guaranteed analysis values for the sample that you have taken. And the standardized claims are pre-populated for soil amendment, fertilizer, animal rem remedy, and feed product categories. To enter a claim value for these product categories, select the box beside the given claims and enter the corresponding value being claimed for that sample that you have taken. Note that the quick list functionality is available for the other option, which provides a nice text box for you to fill in if desired. You can also use the comments field to tell the lab to test for anything on the attached label. This is a good time to attach a picture of the label to the report. This can be achieved in two ways. So the first option is to click the add photo button. And the other way is the attach photo icon. The add photo allows you to add a photo of your collection report by taking a photo via the tablet camera or a USB camera that's attached to your tablet. And the attach photo option allows you to attach a photo to your collection report by navigating to a folder on your computer or on your tablet where the photo already exists. So it's just a question of whether you want to use your tablet to take the photo right on the spot or if you want to use an external device, take the photo and then upload that through your tablet to the report. And with that, we're already done with page two. So let's click that arrow to the right again and we'll go on to the third page. This page contains the functionality to have the person responsible for the location that you are inspecting sign the sample collection report. You'll want to enter the title of the person responsible for the location enter the email address for the person responsible for the location. This field's required, and if for some reason an email address is not available for that person, just enter your own email address. Uh, this is used so that the person can be emailed a copy of the uh, collection report. The page also requires your signature as the inspector taking the sample. And that's all we need to enter on page three, so let's click or tap that next page button one more time, and that will take us to the final page of the sample collection report. This page is used to show all of the pictures that are associated with this collection report. Those may be pictures of the sample label or the sample itself. Whatever you've added to this collection report will be displayed on this page. If you haven't attached any photos yet, you won't see anything here. At least one photo is required though to submit the report. And we just have one more step before we can say this report is ready to submit. That's to review the report by navigating through the page using the left and the right arrows. Once you're satisfied that everything has been input as you desired, it's ready to submit. Go back to the first page and select the ready to submit checkbox. By checking this checkbox, you are initiating an automated check of the required fields. The required fields are product category and subcategory, product, material sampled, lot or invoice number, email, and a photo. Click or tap if you're using a touch screen, the save report button, and you've now got a report that's ready to submit. Let's take a look on the home window. Here on the home screen, we can see that the report that we've just created is highlighted in yellow. And what that means is the report is ready to submit, but it has a chain of custody which still needs to be completed. We can complete the chain of custody very easily simply by clicking on the chain of custody and then clicking the little cart that appears as an icon. An additional option if you have multiple chain of custodies to complete at once is you can click several at a time and update all the chain of custodies with a single update. Now let's click the chain of custody and see what comes up. Here we see the chain of custody entry form. The relinquished by field is automatically filled in with the user's name. The date is the current date by default but can be changed if desired or needed. The house ship field should be filled in with the carrier or method of shipment. And finally, the signature is the inspector's signature and needs to be input in order to relinquish the sample to the shipment company. Once you've filled out those fields on the form, you will also want to take a photo of the shipping receipt that you receive from the carrier when you drop off the package. This is your final confirmation of shipment and it's the final step for the inspector on the chain of custody. Once the images are uploaded and the chain of custody is ready for use, just click save report and your chain of custody is created. Now you see on the home screen that the report we've created is moved over to the ready to submit category. At this point, because we're connected to the internet, we can click submit reports and the report will be transmitted to the server. 
If we were not connected to the internet, the Submit Reports button would be disabled. The report would still appear in green under Reports Ready to Submit but you will not be able to submit it, of course, until you're connected to the internet. The Lymphinite Collector application also has a View Reports feature, which allows you to view the reports that have been submitted. So this displays all of the reports that the server has under your inspector ID. And the Sample Statuses view, which displays all the reports that have been submitted under your inspector ID with a sortable and easy to read table format. One last feature of the Lymphinite Collector application that we will want to talk about before concluding this training is the Settings tab. If you click the gear in the top right corner of the Lymphinite Collector, you will see the settings screen appears. The settings screen currently only has one option, which is the next sample start number. Now this is the sample sequence number that is used when you create a new report. As you create new reports, this sequence is automatically updated so that, generally speaking, you don't have to worry about updating your sample IDs. However, if for some reason it gets out of sync, or if you have a new PC and you need to update that number to continue processing throughout the year, this is the place you go to adjust that number. Remember you can always override the sample number generated in the Create Collection Reports screen, but generally speaking, if you are overriding that number repeatedly, it probably means you need to update your next sample start number here in the settings screen. And that's it for the Lymphinite Collector application overview. If you have any questions, you can always send an email to support at lymphinite.com. Thanks so much for your attention. We're so happy to have you using the Lymphinite Collector application, and we're sure it will serve you well for years to come.